the cost and demand functions are shown below. What is the average selling price at a production level of 500 units? So this is the demand function, also known as the price function, and it tells us the selling price at a certain production level. So don't confuse this with uh, the profit function, this is the price function. So the price at 500 is going to be 50 minus 0 0.01 times 500. Now 0 0.01 times 500, that's 5. So this is 50 minus 5, which means this is going to be $45. So if the company is selling 500 units, the average price that they're charging for is going to be $45 per unit. Now let's move on to part B. What is the revenue, total cost, and profit at a production level of 500 units? Let's start with the revenue. The revenue function or the sales function is going to be x times p of x. So it's the production level times the selling price. And so that's going to be as an equation, that's going to be x times p of x, which is 50 minus 0.01x. So it's 50x minus 0.01x squared. So now let's calculate r of 500. So that's going to be 50 times 500 minus 0.01 times 500 squared. So that's going to be... twenty two thousand five hundred now let me help you to understand what this number represents so we know that the price the average price at 500 units is forty five dollars per unit and we're selling 500 units so it's going to be 500 units times a selling price of forty five dollars per unit and so we can see that the word unit will cancel and it's just 500 times 45 and that gives you a total revenue of 22,500 so that's how much money the company is receiving for selling 500 units of this particular product and so that's the revenue now what about the total cost and the profit of the company well, we already have the total cost function, and uh, here it is. So we just got to plug in 500. So let's see what this is going to give us. So the cost is 7000 Now let's determine the profit. So to distinguish the profit from basically the price function, I'm going to put this little bar on top. Now the profit function is the difference between the revenue function and the cost function. So P of X is going to be R of X, where R of X was 50X minus 0.01X squared. Keep in mind, R of X is just the price times X, and then minus the cost function, which is 2,500 plus 4X plus 0.01X squared. So let's begin by distributing this particular negative sign. So it's going to be 50X minus 0.01X squared minus 2,500 minus 4X minus 0.01X squared. Now let's combine like terms. So we have 50x minus 4x. So that's going to be 46x. And then we have negative 0.01 minus 0.01. So that's going to be negative 0.02x squared. And then minus 2500.
Now let's calculate the profit level at a production level 500. So it's going to be 46 times 500 minus 0 0.02 times 500 squared minus 2500. So the profit is 15500 So we have the total cost at a production level of 500 at $7,000. And the profit of the company at a production level of 500 is 15500 And we saw that the revenue at that same production level was 22500 And that makes sense because if you subtract the revenue by the cost, 22500 minus 7000 you should get a profit of 15500 because the profit is the difference between the revenue and the cost. Now let's move on to part C. Find a production level that will maximize the profit. So how can we do that? How can we determine the production level that will maximize the profit? Well, we know that P of X, the profit function, is the difference between the revenue and the cost function. So if we were to find the first derivative of that equation, we'll get P prime of X is equal to R prime minus C prime. So P prime is the marginal profit. That's the derivative of the profit function. This is the marginal revenue, and this is the marginal cost. To maximize a certain function or a variable, if you want to find a maximum value of a function, you need to set the first derivative equal to 0. So we want to determine the maximum profit, or the production level that will lead to the maximum profit. And the maximum profit will occur when the marginal profit is equal to 0, which means that r prime minus c prime will be equal to 0. So let's focus on that. So if I add C prime to both sides of that equation, then R prime is equal to C prime whenever the profit is a maximum. And so that's how we can find a production level that will maximize the profit. We need to set the marginal revenue equal to the marginal cost. Now we said that the revenue function was 50x minus 0.01x squared. Now let's find the marginal revenue. The derivative of 50x is 50. The derivative of x squared is 2x times 0 0.01. So that's 0.02x. And then for the marginal cost, that's going to be the derivative of this expression. The derivative of the constant 2500 is 0, the derivative of 4x is 4, and the derivative of 0.01x squared is going to be 0 0.01 times 2x, or 0.02x. So now what we need to do is set the marginal revenue equal to the marginal cost. Another way in which you can get the same answer is if you set the marginal profit equal to 0, because that's where this equation came from. So that's another way to get the same answer. But let's set these two equal to each other. So 50 minus 0.02x is equal to 4 plus 0.02x. So let's subtract both sides by 4. And at the same time, let's add 0.02x to both sides. So 50 minus 4 is 46. 0 0.02 plus 0 0.02 is 0 0.04. Now let's divide both sides by 0 0.04. So 46 divided by 0 0.04 is 1150. So this is the production level that will maximize the profit. So if the company wants to make the most money that it can, 
it needs to sell 1150 units to receive the most profit that they can possibly make. Now let's calculate the maximum profit. So we said that the profit function was 46x minus 0.02x squared minus 2500. And so if we plug in 500, I mean not 500 but 1150, it's going to be 46 times 1150 minus 0 0.02 times 1150 squared minus 2500. And so this will give you 23,950. So that is the maximum profit that the company can make if they choose to sell 1150 units. Now, by the way, the other way to get the answer, as we mentioned before, is to set the marginal profit equal to zero. So the marginal profit is going to be the derivative of this function. So that's going to be 46 minus 0 0.02 times 2x or 0 0.04x, and this will be zero. So if you set this equal to zero and solve for x, you're going to get the same answer. It's going to be 46 divided by 0 0.04. which we know to be 1150. So there's two ways in which you could find the profit or the production level that will maximize the profit. So you can find the marginal profit and set it equal to zero and solve for x, or you could set the marginal revenue equal to the marginal cost function and then solve for x. Both methods will lead to the same answer. Now let's verify that this is indeed the maximum profit. So let's organize the information that we have into a table. So we're going to have x and p of x. So we already know the profit at a production level of 500. And the maximum profit occurs at 1150. So let's calculate the profit at 1,000, 1,300, and 1,500. So we have two numbers below this number and two numbers above it. So at 500 units, we know that the profit is 15,500. Let me use the dollar symbol. And we know that at 1150, the profit was, the maximum profit was 23,950. Go ahead and calculate the profit at a production level of 1,000, 1,300, and 1,500 using this equation. So 46 times 1,000 minus 0 0.02 times 1,000 squared minus 2,500 that's going to be 23,500. So we can see that it's less than 23,950. So now let's try 1,300. 46 times 1,300 minus 0 0.02 times 1,300 squared minus 2,500. So that's going to be 23,500 as well. And so that's less than 23,950. And let's try 1,500. So 46 times 1,500 minus 0 0.02 times 1,500 squared minus 2,500. That's going to be 21,500. So we can clearly see that the maximum profit does occur at this production level because this value is the highest. It's the maximum value that's listed of all the numbers in the second column. So the production level that leads to the maximum profit is 1150 and the maximum profit itself is $23,950.
Now let's move on to part E. What is the marginal profit at a production level of 500 units? So we said the marginal profit, we wrote it down already, it's the derivative of this function, which turned out to be 46 minus 0.04x. Now let's calculate it at a production level of 500 units. So that's 46 times 0 0.04 times 500. By the way, the marginal profit at 1150, because that's the maximum, will be equal to 0. Anytime you wish to find a maximum value of a function, the first derivative must be equal to 0. So just keep that in mind. So 46 times 0 0.04 times 500, that's 26. So the marginal profit at a production level of 500 is $26 per unit. So what does this number mean? The marginal profit tells us the change in profit if we sell an additional unit. So the profit at a production level of 500 is 15,500. So what is the profit at a production level of 501? So let's plug in 501 into this equation. So it's going to be 46 times 501 minus 0 0.02 times 501 squared minus 2,500. This will give you 15,525.98. Now notice the difference between these two numbers. If you subtract 15,525.98 by 15,500, the difference is $25.98, which for the most part rounds to $26 per unit. And so the marginal profit at 500 units will tell us approximately the increase in profit going from 500 to 501. So if we sell one extra unit, it gives us a good approximation of how much the profit will change. So going from 500 to 501, it tells us that the profit will increase by approximately $26. And so that's the meaning behind the marginal profit. And the same is true for the marginal revenue and the marginal costs. The marginal revenue tells you the change in revenue if you decide to sell one more unit. And the marginal cost tells you the change in the total cost if you decide to sell one additional unit. And so hopefully that gives you a good idea behind the meaning behind uh, the marginal profit, marginal revenue, and marginal costs. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and have a good day.